It's the final business day of the week, and this is Business Incorporated coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. Coming up on the show, Nigerian stock market hits a month high shortly after President Muhammadu Buhari's return from an extended medical leave. ExxonMobil agrees to pay ENI $2.8 billion for a 25% stake in a giant Mozambique gas field. Plus, Africa's CEOs ready to brainstorm at the Geneva Forum on March 20 and 21. Now let's get started. And of course, we're beginning with the markets here in Nigeria. The equities hit a one-month high shortly after the stock market opened for trade on Friday following President Muhammadu Buhari's return from an extended medical leave in Britain. According to Thomson Reuters data, stocks rose 1.29% at 9.36 a.m. to levels last seen in February. However, at midday, data from the Nigerian Stock Exchange shows the all share index trading up by 0.66%. Johannesburg Stock Exchange is also in the green, up 0.59% at intraday. The market in Egypt is closed today for weekend, but ended in the positive territory on Thursday. Nairobi Stock Exchange was up 0.19% on Thursday. In the Middle East, markets are closed on Friday for weekend holiday. However, most major stock markets were pulled down on Thursday by a 5% overnight slide in oil prices, while Abu Dhabi was hit particularly hard as heavyweights First Gulf Bank and National Bank of Abu Dhabi traded ex-dividend. Now, Abu Dhabi stocks index dropped 2.9% as First Gulf Bank tumbled 8.7% and National Bank of Abu Dhabi lost 4.2%. Analysts say stocks in both banks, which are due to merge on April 1, fell more steeply than justified by the simple removal of the value of the dividends, suggesting some investors believed the value of the combined entity looked too demanding. Dubai's index fell 0.3% in very thin trade, with tourism-sensitive companies closing lower. Saudi Arabia's index fell 0.8%. Uh, as all but one of the 14 petrochemical shares declined in response to oil price decline. Uh, Qatar outperformed, closing up 1.02%. In Europe, investors turned their attention to the release of a non-farm payrolls in the U.S. and, of course, are digesting the European Central Bank's decision to keep interest rates unchanged on Thursday. Let's cross over to Frankfurt Stock Exchange for details with my colleagues there, Lars Holter. Good afternoon, Lars. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, today I've decided we're going to talk about Germany, Germany, Germany. This week we saw a lot of economic data coming out of Germany. That's from imports to factory orders, industrial and so on. Put all of these in context for us. What does it tell about the state of German economy? Well, most of the numbers in general were re very positive numbers, uh, talking about a strong German economy. And the most important and, in a way, the most interesting numbers actually were the latest numbers that we got today, Friday, this morning, just a few hours ago. Those were those import and export numbers. Uh, the import numbers for Germany rose by 3%, and uh, that is a lot stronger than expected. And for the first time in many years, imports in uh, Germany rose more than exports. Uh, that is interesting because recently, of course, uh, Germany got criticized uh, by uh, American President Trump and others uh, for exporting uh, too much and uh, not importing enough to be too much focused on exports, which is, of course, uh, dominant in the uh, German economy and has always been. Uh, now, it's interesting looking at uh, the data that we got this morning, how suddenly things are changing a little bit with imports being much stronger. Domestic demand is up. Also, of course, oil prices are up, so that plays into that as well, because uh, Germany obviously is an importer of oil. Um, uh, but in general now, we have to see this uh, all does not change the general picture here. What we get with monthly figures, of course, is a little bit of a snapshot here. It tells us what is happening right now, in this case, in the month of January. Um, but it does not really talk much about a longer trend. The longer trend is still clear. It's not even 
even a trend, it's just a long-term fact that uh, Germany is and remains an export-driven economy. Now, last, despite um, uh, President Donald Trump's criticism, uh, yesterday ECB President Mario Draghi praised the German economy in his speech. What do you make of um, this Draghi's comment? And looking behind you there, I could see uh, the DAX tilting down. Is it that it's not reacting to that positive comment coming from ECB President? Well, Draghi's comments, especially after what I just said, are really interesting because he is praising indeed the German economy as a strong economy, as uh, the number one economy driving uh, the EU, the Eurozone. Um, uh, and of course, it does that as an export strong economy. So this is, of course, interesting. Now, in that context with American President Trump, who has criticized the German economy for just that. So, of course, Mario Draghi is absolutely right in his assessment of the economy in the Eurozone, but specifically the German economy. But just pointing it out the way he did is an interesting political message that he is sending there. All right, let's look at um, the German markets this week. Um, could you review the stocks and bonds and, of course, um, give us an outlook for next week? Well, very interesting. Next week is an important meeting. Uh, German Chancellor Merkel is actually flying to Washington for her first visit with the new president. And of course, what they are talking about is uh, many things, but among them is the economy. And as I just said, there has been conflict as of late with Trump criticizing Germany for uh, being an ex export-driven economy. Uh, Trump and uh, his cabinet have urged Germany uh, to import more and export less now. Of course, that will not happen, uh, but that will certainly be something that the two leaders here will be discussing. And uh, Chancellor Merkel is actually not traveling just by herself. She has in her group uh, two German CEOs, the CEOs of BMW and Siemens, two companies uh, that actually employ thousands of Americans in plants and factories in the United States. So I think uh, Chancellor Merkel here is making a very clear point that uh, uh, the relationship between Germany and America on an economic basis is not quite as simple as Donald Trump says. It is not just German companies exporting goods into the United States and, as he would put it, taking advantage of the United States, but it is a lot more complicated at it, and it includes clearly the fact that German companies do actually play a big role within the U.S. economy on the job market, on the labor market, uh, but also just being part of the productive force there. Well, Lars, we'll sure look out for the outcome of that uh, meeting next week. Thank you very much. It's been a wonderful time with you this week. Enjoy your weekend.